Okay. Well, just again, for those of you who don't like taking uh, detailed notes or can't take detailed notes, we have two examples on the board right now that um, I'd like to just have a, you know, a video record of, both of which from Chapter 12, the Chi-Square chapter. First, we have an example number in the book, I guess it's 12.3, that has 20, 30, 30, 45 as the, as the basic data. And the question is, are the rows and columns independent? Or as we, as we said, so let's, let's make a concrete example. So let's say this is a, the sex variable, this group one is the males and group two is the females. And this, let's say, is a pass-fail variable. And A in particular represents yes, they passed, and B means they failed. So 20, 20 out of 50 males passed, and 30 out of 75 males passed. Well, the fact is that 20 out of 50 is 40%, and 30 out of 75 is also 40%, means that males and females are passing at the exact same rate, which should let you uh, predict that there's going to turn out to be a non-significant uh, uh, result, meaning that the, we're going to accept the A0. The A0, the two variables of classification, are independent. And for the case of two groups, that's the same way as saying that the, the percentage of the first group, the male group and the female group, have the same passing rate. P is for percentage. So versus the, the H1, that in this case, the, the P1, the percentage of males are not, is different than the percentage of females. Well, in this case, the males and females both pass at 40%. So clearly, the A0 is totally true. How do you prove it by the chi-squared? Well, again, we calculate that this is called the F observed. And the number in the circle is called the frequency of the expected. And Kim put down the actual calculation. It's going to be the row total times the column total divided by the grand total. So it's 50 times 50 divided by 125, which comes out to 20. And likewise, these other numbers, the number in the circle here is 30. 30 and 45. The second part of the calculation, which is you, you total across all the possible cells, in this case there are four of them, the, the frequency observed minus the frequency expected squared divided by the frequency expected. So 20 minus 20 squared divided by 20 is zero, et cetera. So it came out to zero, which is not too, too it's an unusual number, but it's not surprising in this case because the numbers are perfectly proportional. And the chi-square table, which starts with zero, et cetera, it has a one-tailed rejection at alpha 0.05. The alpha is 0.05, and, and of course, the degree of freedom is r minus one times c minus one, which is two minus one times two minus one, or one times one, or one. And if you go to the chi-square table, you're gonna say 3.841 is the is the boundary, the, you know, the, the boundary between accepting and rejecting. And finally, zero is located to the left of 3.81. Do not reject a zero. So the answer is do not reject a zero. They are independent. That's or if the, if the question asked, does the percentage of males equal the percentage of females, yes or no, the answer is yes, they're equal, as we knew from the very beginning. A slightly more elaborate example is homework number 24, I believe, of chapter 12, where they give you three columns and three rows, which means the degree of freedom is going to be two times two or four. And the numbers themselves are nine, five, 18. Those are the numbers called the observed numbers. The expected number, for example, for the first, the very first of the nine boxes, the cells it, making the test and maybe it can help you avoid it, is some people, when they count up how many rows there are, some people say one row, two row, three rows, and they count the last set of numbers as a fourth row. It's not true. There's only giving you three rows of data, so there's three rows here, not, not four. And likewise, all these numbers are filled in, and then, of course, you calculate the chi-squared itself, which we'll talk about. But I pointed out to the class before, and this is for posterity, that the numbers in the circles, the expected, when you add them together, should come out exactly to the number that you started with. Here. So it comes out to 32. And likewise, the numbers in the, in the columns will add up to 44. I hope that turning in maybe with some rounding would be very close to that. And finally, the chi-squared itself is a, the 9 minus 12.14 squared divided by 12.14. After doing that nine times, um, Gina got 9.55. Gina, maybe your grandchildren are going to see this one day. They're going to say, that's my grandmother. <laughs> okay, 9.55, I don't change it. Uh, uh, 9.55. Um, 
Uh, and of course, the book tells you to do it by two different alphas. At the point of one, the, 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 the cutoff point is 13.277. So in that case, since it's to the left of 13.277, the answer is do not reject a zero. And no, there is no relationship between the two variables. They're independent. And here, if we use 0.05, you get a higher alpha, a higher, um, I'm sorry, a lower critic because it's pushed over to the, this is now 0.05 of the area. 0.05 is here, so it's pushed over to the, to the left. And here, 9.55 is to the right of the rejection region, and the answer is you do reject a zero. Yes, there is a, they, they are related. Yes, they're, you know, they're, they're not independent. They're, yes, they're related. Okay, the opposite of independent is that they, they are related. So that's a brief, um, and of course I pointed out that you have to start out every example with the hypotheses, which are always the same. The two variables of classification, that number two will be constant throughout the entire chapter. Never change it to a three or a four. Now again, based on, don't you think I tell my every